Hi again, welcome back to Outdoor Adventure TV. We're still in lockdown. You might be too. Can't go out and have any adventures. So what we're gonna do today is talk about the building of the Desert Dog. I took a lot of pictures. I'm gonna share some of those pictures with you, walk you through what I was thinking when I put it together and how I built it. We've had a ton of fun in it and I'm gonna go ahead and just show you some of those pictures. Anyway, thank, thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you later. We've been pulling around camping trailers since cars were first developed. But this article, written in 1947, was really the beginning of the teardrop movement. Lots of variations have occurred since then, different shapes, different sizes, but all with the same idea. Small, compact, and lots of fun. This is the story of the Desert Dog and how I built her. I started making drawings of the inside of the trailer just to see a little bit what it would be like and to try to figure out a layout that would would make sense for the way I camp. Then I started doing a series of drawings to try to figure out how to put the whole thing together. Different corners, how to attach the walls to the to the trailer itself, how to make a hatch work, and even a little bit on the electrical circuits. I would like to thank the sponsor of this episode, my local pharmacy, who kept me well stocked with bandages and ointment. So the Desert Dog started life as a boat trailer. Long story behind that, but no, no more boat, now a camper. We cut it up and welded it into the uh, size I wanted. It's roughly 5 by 10 feet long, which is big enough for a queen-size bed. I started tearing all the parts, suspension parts off, and painted them, cleaned them up, because it had had a hard life with very little love. Here's the trailer just getting ready for the first pull around the block to make sure that it was tracking straight. Everything was good. Next, we laid down a deck, and I wanted some underbed storage. So I built a couple boxes and incorporated those into the base of the trailer. I decided to fiberglass the outside of my trailer. I thought it would add to the durability and then I could use boat paint on the outside of it to make it look the way I wanted to. Once I had the sides completed, I went ahead and attached them to the trailer, put on a roof, and then started stringing the wiring because I wanted to have all the wiring done before I started installing the insulation to help keep it cool in the summer and warm in the winter. I live in the desert southwest and I wanted to add some ventilation to the trailer. So I grabbed a couple small computer fans, installed them on a piece of the interior plywood and attached it to the, to the trailer wall. I had a switch up in the roof so I could turn it on and off whenever I wanted to run them. I calculated that this would turn over all of the air about every three to four minutes. And although it works reasonably well, uh, I don't think I would do it again. A fantastic fan on the roof, I think is a much better alternative. But I have it and uh, it's okay. I cut the door frames out of the same wood as the side walls put a frame around them so I'd have some place to put the insulation. Then of course I fiberglassed them just like the rest of the outside. We headed over to the junkyard and were able to find a couple uh, windows that looked like they would be ideal for this trailer. Got to save some money. The problem is the opening windows were a little bit too big. So I had to take them apart, cut off the extra window and put them back together. Made a perfect window for this little trailer. 
I used boat paint on the outside of the trailer. It seemed like an ideal solution since it's boats are outside all the time. Good UV protection and it's got to be tough paint. When we got to this point, I was making good progress. I had flooring down and the sidewalls had been paneled with a nice interior paneling. Insulation is in place to try to keep everything uh, temperature controlled. The next thing we put in was a nice countertop so I'd have something in the galley to cook on. This piece just came from Home Depot and it was a standard countertop. Now these terminal strips are how I distribute all the power. Looks like a little bit of a mess but all the power goes out from here and all the ground wires come back in to this point. That way I can easily add or remove whatever I need to do for the electrical system. Next I moved on to building the hatch. Now the hatch I'm trying to get framed up here and get everything in place ready to sheath it and put the outside skin on it which of course again was was a half inch plywood. I think it was a little bit too heavy. Probably should have done everything out of 3 8 Now I fiberglassed over the top of it just like I did everything else. Tried to give it a smooth surface that didn't work so good because of the um, overlaying different pieces of glass cloth. I can't begin to tell you how many hours I spent outside under the shade trying to get the fiberglass on all the pieces for this trailer. I won't say I ever got good at it, but most of the parts came out usable. Now the trailer's starting to take form here. It actually looks like a trailer. I've got some of the aluminum trim on, the rear hatch actually works. Turns out pretty nice. This is the stereo system that went into the trailer. Of course, it's got a CD player and speakers. I also have an XM receiver and two outlets to be able to plug electrical things into. And then I built a little bracket to hang both of the antennas off of. One's the FM antenna, one's the XM antenna. These are the brackets that are going to hold the fenders in place. I think I goofed up on one of them. I had to cut it all apart and re-weld it so I could get tab mounting tab in the right place. Once installed, it just mounted to the side of the trailer and held the uh, nice fenders in place. In the interior, I wanted to have a couple of shelves to be able to put stuff on. So I've got them in place. The next thing I wanted to do was put a little pull-out drawer underneath. So I took some of the birch and put a groove into it that the plywood would set into and then built a little pull out uh, tray that would fit right under the shelves and that's ideal for sitting a laptop on to sit and watch movies when uh, the weather is not so nice outside. The trailer's almost done. I've got all the trim on it. At this point in time we are ready to take it out and start camping. I've got the battery and a spare tire out front just to be able to keep everything out of the way. So that worked out really well. And once you start getting it all together and it starts looking like a trailer, it's amazing how good it feels. This was a long project, it took me about three years to build it. I used some seat belt strapping to hold the doors to keep them from being ripped out. And then a couple little bags on each side to drop your little sundry things into. Out back, trailer's starting to be close to done. I've got the water jug, the ice chest, all my utensils and plates and stuff like that all packed up. Now here's what it looks like when it's ready to cook. I can pull the ice chest out to get to it, pull the, one of the shelves out to put my stove on. Very convenient to work on because I love to Dutch oven cook. One of the things that I did is put a spice tray up above the cook surface and that way I could keep all the things like the spices and salt and pepper and everything like that off the main work surface. And now the trailer was done and it was time to head off on adventures. We drug the trailer all over the west coast. Had a great time, took it up and down some trails we shouldn't have. But I'll tell you what, I don't think I would want to have any other way of camping. Teardrop trailers are just amazing.